Hello, today we can officially enroll for the JobKeeper payments with the ATO. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to talk through the steps that you need to do in order to enroll, and hopefully this is some use. So a quick action summary. You need to make sure that you as the employee meet the eligibility requirements, which I'll talk through briefly. You actually have to tell the employees that you, their employer, intend to participate in this scheme. So you need communication with your employees that are gonna be part of it. Uh, you have to send them the employee nomination notice and they have to complete it and return it to you. Um, I'll show you what that looks like and talk you through it. And you have to complete this form on file for five years. So you don't actually need to send it to the ATO, you just need to have it on file in case the ATO ask you for it. So, you know, treat it like a, a tax receipt. To, of like a you know an invoice to sh show that you pay for expenses it's just good to have on file and then you then pay the minimum 1500 to eligible employees per fortnight the first one starts on 30th of march ends of 12th of april and then you can do a monthly payment for the first two fortnights so it kicks in end of march so we've got to catch up for this um, month of april and then which is the main reason I'm doing this video, you can enroll using the business portal and authenticate with your MyGov ID. So that's logging into the business portal using your MyGov and taking those next steps. So that's what we're going to talk through. So logging into the portal is step one to enroll, find out who your eligible employees are. And then also I'll show you a bonus step of how Zero has updated to include this in their single touch payroll feature. Great. I should uh, note, I won't cover this in depth, but you need to be maintaining this. So make a monthly, a business, a monthly business declaration. So they've called it a business monthly declaration report. And you'll have to reconfirm the eligible employees with the ATO and, and reconfirm those details. So that's something you'll have to do on an ongoing basis when you're part of this scheme. I've included some handy links. I'll include a link to this Google Doc. I'll make it available for everyone so you can find all of these links. These are all the key links that I use to prepare for this video and that will shortcut you to um, being able to get info on the ATO, the turnover test, who's eligible, that's the form employees fill out, all that good stuff. So the big question is how do I work out my 30% drop, how you're eligible. It's on your GST turnover. And it doesn't matter if you're not registered for GST, it's still a GST turnover, which essentially is your gross business income. That's the main, um, that's the main definition. So it's not your profit. It excludes the GST included in your sales to customers. So not that extra 10% you charge them. Sales that are not for payment and not taxable supplies, not connected with your business, any input tax sales and not connected with Australia. So that's just an existing definition they use for working out if you, reg you should register for, register for GST, they're just applying it for the JobKeeper. I should note there's an alternative test, and this is up to the commissioner, but the cases where it might be appropriate is if you recently commenced a new business with no prior year comparisons. So a lot of these 30% um, drops will be what was your March figures 2020 versus what was your March figures 2019. So they're looking back 12 months. So say if you've been going for less than 12 months, this is this alternate test enables you to be able to compare perhaps February 2020 versus March 2020. So it's a bit of leniency for people under 12 months. Uh, also, you know, structural business changes after the relevant comparison period. So say you sold a business unit that was propping up a big part of your revenue last year. I think you've got a case to argue where you could say, hey, look, that business entity or that business that part of the business has been sold. That's why we're down this year. Uh, and also if your prior years are distorted for yeah, structural changes, like you sold part of the business or if there was a drought last year. So those are all alternative tests. And they said they'll be making a legislative instrument soon about all this stuff. So step one, enroll for the JobKeeper payment. Log into the business portal using your MyGov ID. Select Manage Employees and then click the link for JobKeeper payment and then fill out the form. You have to let them know that you've nominated them and then nominate, you should fill enroll before the end of April. 
Uh, that's important if you want to be able to get the money as soon as possible. Enrollments are open till the end of May if you need more time, but you might as well get on it and get the cash in your pocket sooner. Who's eligible? Uh, I've, I've done a previous video on this, but just a quick recap. Anyone who's currently employ, employed by the eligible employer, including if you were stood down or rehired, you had to be permanent, full-time or part-time employee as at the 1st of March 2020, which is the key cutoff date, or a long-term casual employee, which means you're employed on a regular and systematic basis for at least 12 months, as at 1st of March 2020. So that's the cutoff date. Uh, there's also some sub-clauses you can find in the links I've uh, I've got above, which are you have to be over 16, an Aussie or New Zealand resident, not on workers' comp, stuff like that. Uh, and you include all eligible employees, which I can't imagine why you're not going to go for it because it's, you know, it's an extra wage subsidy for your business. So, of course, you will. One note, don't double claim. So, speak to your employees and make sure they're not get applying for the job seeker allowance. Um, so, if you get called out that their employee is not only collecting job seeker and job keeper, um, they've warned that if your employee does not report the income or cancel their job seeker payment, they may incur a debt that you will be required to pay back. So just be careful, make sure you communicate with all employees that you're going into this scheme with. Uh, so this is what the form looks like, and this is what you need to send to your employees. I'll let you read all this on your own, but essentially it's quite simple. Put in your name as the employer, put in the name and the ABN, you send it to your employee, they just fill in their name, date of birth, address, phone, email, and say, yes, I agree to be nominated, and sign and date. And this is the thing you keep on file. So it's not rocket science and it's fairly simple. You just need that signed by your employees who are participating in it and have that on file in case the ATO come knocking. So yeah, as I said, it doesn't need to be sent to the ATO currently, but you have to fill it in to make sure that everyone's committed. And so this is the second part of it. We have got to dive into the ATO business portal. So when you log in, you should have that manage employees uh, item on the left. If you click on that, you can see JobKeeper enroll. So that's one way to do it. But when I logged in this morning, there was actually a big um, green rectangle here that says access ATO measures and tailored support during COVID. And I clicked on view and it got me to the same place. This is what it looks like. So I'll just try and go see if we can go full screen, it might make it a bit easier. There we are. So, step one, enroll the business for JobKeeper wage subsidies. And you click on that little button there to enroll. Step two is to identify and maintain employees who are eligible for the JobKeeper wage subsidies. So I've already done, I already showed you the form that you need to do. And you can see here the deadline I mentioned by 30th of April, you should do that. And I'll also show you how to um, update it in zero for this. Cool. So you click through on enroll and it takes you through here. And it's a fairly simple form. I'll let you read the details, but essentially you just need to say, are you a charity or not-for-profit? Uh, so in, most of our clients would say no to this. Again, do this for your own specific business circumstances. And then does your aggregate turnover exceed a billion dollars per annum? Most of our clients will also be no. Which month have you experienced or likely experienced a reduction in turnover? So this is a drop down menu. And so there'll be March, April, May, June, July. So this is open for potentially if there was a drop in April or potentially a drop in May. So it gives you that opportunity to be able to um, apply for it depending on how delayed the revenue decline is so if you didn't start seeing the impacts in March and you didn't make that 30 percent you know if it happened in April then you've still got that leniency to say hey we're going to start having to claim it in April and so that just tells them when it began and has it fallen or is it likely to fall 30 percent or more uh, click yes of course if you believe you're eligible this is just letting them know how many employees are going to be part of this so number of JobKeeper eligible employees paid during April. So key thing is paid. So you need to pay your employees this money and then you get it reimbursed. So this isn't paid in advance by the ATO. They need to see evidence of you paying your employees and they're giving you that 1500 a fortnight cash back. So that's, you just need to let them know 
how many employees, Fortnite 1 and Fortnite 2, which is essentially the, the April month. And then moving forward, it'll just be rolling as we go. Are you intending to enroll an eligible business participant? I'm going to talk about that down below. And then it's fairly simple. You just put in your company's account name, BSB, that you want the subsidies paid back into. And then contact details of the form, whoever's filled this out, put in their details. And then you just tick the box to declare and then submit. So that's a, it's a fairly simple form. A couple of variances. If you clicked business owners actively engaged in their business or so an eligible business participant. Um, so this is to take into account the other businesses in the form of a company, trust or partnership that can also qualify for a JobKeeper payment. So a shareholder, adult beneficiary or partner who's actively engaged in the business or a director who's actively engaged in the business. So this is to take into account, um, you know, owner operators who are working in the business and, you know, want to apply for the JobKeeper payment as a part of this. So not just solely employees, but this is um, the key part of this is that you need to meet all the following criteria. Engaged, obviously, in the business over 16 years or 18 in the case of a trust, had an ABN 12th of March and had had accessible income 2018-19. Relevant individual is an Australian resident and is not an employee other than a casual employee of another entity. So that's to make sure you're not double claiming for the JobKeeper. So that is handy to know. If you click left, yes, obviously you can see I've, they've listed out these things to make sure that you know whether you are or not. So you need to declare that you are, if you are, in fact. And then I also should just note for sole traders who are applying for this via MyGov, I also logged into MyGov. The form pretty much looks the same, except the only variance is if you're enrolling as a sole trader, you click yes, and then the drop down, which is very similar to the one above, you just need to read all those details and make sure that you're relevant. So although you're clicking in via MyGov and then going to the ATO, the form is itself, from what I can tell, is essentially the same. So hopefully that information above helps and you just need to confirm. So that's it. You log in and you're done. So the one thing that I want to talk about is how it looks in Zero, because they have if you have single touch payroll uh, enabled, it's really really handy. So again, identify which employee that you're going to um, nominate. If you have single touch payroll, you can do it within Zero, which I'm going to show you. And then if you don't, you can also uh, nominate them via the business portal manually but I'll show you how this looks in, in zero because it's really handy and they've done a really quick update. So if you go to payroll overview, you can see this blue rectangle here, payroll support during COVID. You can go to the payroll overview here. And so this talks through the government support. Check if your business is eligible using Zero's turnover calculator, which is a really handy item, and that'll work out quite easily. Calculating your change in turnover to find that 30% drop. Enroll your business in the payment scheme with the ATO, which is exactly what I just talked you through there, filling in that form. Set up single touch payroll, which hopefully everyone's already on. Enroll employees for the JobKeeper payments. So if we click through to that, that takes you through this second tab. You can see about and JobKeeper settings. This takes you through that second one. So I'll go back to about for now. Report your payments to the ATO by filing with single touch as soon as possible, obviously, and complete your monthly declarations with the ATO. So that's going to be your monthly ongoing work with the ATO, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And let's talk through enrolling employees for JobKeeper payments, which is this second tab up here. You can see I'm in the demo company, so this is all made up. Um, I've already done a couple of videos for people on how to do it, but so you can see I've already enrolled a couple in JobKeeper. But let's pretend that Oliver Gray is eligible. All you have to do is click Start JobKeeper. And let's say they started from end of March. 
save for reporting. Cool, so all of us on board. Fantastic. And so now we go, if we go into payroll, pay employees, you'll see that they've updated an item in the pay run calendar. So let's see if we can go work out where Oliver is in our demo company. Here he is, Oliver Gray. So if you click on his name in the payroll and you can add an earnings line here. And the earnings line you can see is JobKeeper payment top up. So we can add that in and this will help us track the JobKeeper related uh, subsidies coming from the ATO. So this is for fortnight ending 14th of April. So the first fortnight of April. And let's say he's getting that 1500 a fortnight. Um, so that's a really, really easy way that we can report this with the ATO. Please take into account, obviously, you're not going to be paying double. You just need to adjust the hours here to take into account this 1500 subsidy. So you may need to reduce these hours up here in line with whatever your employee was due to be paid for that fortnight because this is supposed to subsidize the wage. It's not supposed to give everyone a pay rise at 1500, obviously. So you have to adjust that hours there. Cool. And that's it. You can save and, and submit via single touch payroll and the ATO will be able to track it via there. So this obviously is just some screenshots of what we ran through there and then obviously setting up the employees. Cool. So thanks for watching and I'll include a link to this um, Google document. Click on all these. This is where you can find all the stuff that I just walked through. Hopefully it's of some use and stay safe out there. We'll chat soon. Cheers.